بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر Now, we're going to dedicate ourselves in appreciating just some lessons from the first ayah. إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ And I'm not going to go in order of the words. We'll come to the words later on. I'm going to start from the first verb in the ayah. أَعْطَى To give. There's another word in Arabic, أَعْطَى is also commonly translated as to give. Then there's another word, وَهَبَ وَهَبَ Like رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا What's the difference between these words? Hiba in Arabic or wahaba is to give a gift. And it's not just a small gift, it's a huge gift. So when we ask Allah to give us tranquility from our spouses and our children, then that's a big gift. That's not something small. Ita in Arabic, to give, is actually to give, but it's not absolute. In other words, you are giving something, but it comes with responsibilities, or you're giving something that you can take back. الكتاب, we give them the book. Allah gave the book. Does the book come with responsibility? It does. It does. So when giving is associated with some responsibility, or it's something that can be taken back, then in these scenarios, ita is used. But i'ta, to give actually means when you give someone, when you're so happy with them because of their obedience. That's one of the meanings of i'ta. In other words, when Allah says, أَعْطَيْنَاكَ Allah is pleased with the way the Messenger follows the commandments of Allah. And as a result of His pleasure, He is giving. And this is not a giving that was expected. Very important. You know, sometimes you obey someone and then they give you, like your job. You obey your boss and then you get a paycheck at the end of the week. That's ajr. That's not i'ta. I'ta is, you did this because you didn't, ex- not with any expectation. And then out of the pleasure of the, the, the one who you did it for is so pleased with you, they give you. Without your expectation and beyond your expectation. This is one. Then i'ta is more grand. It's not used for small things, it's only used for big things. It's not a small thing, it's a very, very big thing. Then finally, the third, that i'ta, this word is actually considered a favor that cannot be compared with. And it's something that's not taken back. And something that doesn't come with strings that are attached. In other words, once it's given to you, enjoy. So when Allah Azza wa says, Al-Kawthar, enjoy these gifts. Then as far as the, the, the tense of the word is concerned, أَعْطَيْنَا Allah didn't say, inna سَنُعْطِي That's the present future. That's actually the future tense. We will soon give you. But here He says, inna أَعْطَيْنَا No doubt we already gave you. Past tense. But nonetheless, this is something in the future. So why use the past tense to talk about something in the future? This is a legitimate question. If you want to talk about something in the future that is super guaranteed, it, then you talk about it in the past tense because the past tense is used to describe that which is guaranteed. It is as though you're saying it is as sure as yesterday. So this is this is the rhetorical first rhetorical benefit. The second rhetorical benefit of using the past tense is the is the form of completion. As far as Allah is concerned, the favor is guaranteed and the favor is also complete. Now we come to the word kawthar. Kawthar from a morphology, from a sarf point of view, belongs to the Arabic pattern fawal. Fawal. Now this word al kawthar it doesn't. It comes from the word kathir or kathra. Kathra means to have plenty. Kathir is an adjective. Al kawthar is incredible, incredible amounts of something. Kawthar has a wow in it. Kathir has a ya in it. In Arabic rhetoric, in balagha, the wow is stronger than the ya. So if Allah said kathir, it would be a lot still, but Allah said kawthar, making it even more. This is to describe what Allah has given His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The word kathir can be used for good and bad things, but the word kawthar can only be used for good things. Yeah. That Allah said, inna a'tainak al kawthar. In other words, everything Allah has given him is incredibly good, and He's given him a lot of it, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's an al on it, inna a'tainak al kawthar. So some have argued because this is al kawthar it's only referring to the river in paradise and nothing else. But when you refer in Arabic to something with an adjective, when you talk about the adjective but you don't mention the noun, right? Then that adjective could be referring to many things even if it has al. 
And this is part of the grand gift giving of Allah Azza wa Jal that He didn't limit the gift that He gave to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The word inna, the word inna, we didn't do that. We did a'taynaka, we did al kawthar but we didn't do inna. This inna in Arabic is actually grammatically, even if you don't say it, the sentence is complete. You can say a'taynaka al kawthar We gave you al kawthar And the word we is already there because at the word of a'tay you have the na, that's the fa'il, that's the, that's the word we. It's already there. But we say inna, that's a we, na at the end. A'tayna, that's another we. Now if you literally translate, certainly we, comma, we gave you al-kawthar. You could, you could also say, nahnu a'tayna al-kawthar. But there's inna, the, 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 the harf al-tawqeed is there. The benefit of harf al-tawqeed is to remove doubt. And since it is only we who has given it to you, the only one who can take it away is us. But since we gave you i'ta, not ita, we're never going to take it away either. No one can take away from you what we have given you. So these, this gift that Allah has given His Messenger with, with this tawqeed on inna in the beginning is a, a special you know, privilege has been given to the Messenger wasallam. We just count from a language point of view how many ways Allah has magnified what He's giving His Messenger in just the first ayah.